If you think back to the beginning of the course, we talked about how, from a field service perspective, it's really four different concepts. It's the work order creation process, it's the scheduling and dispatching process, the service delivery, and then the reviewing billing. And up until this point, we've really focused very heavily on the work order creation and the scheduling and dispatching option. We haven't talked a whole lot about the service delivery standpoint, and that's really what we want to get into in this module. And so when we start talking about service delivery, really we're talking about now you have have your technicians who are out in the field and they're going to go out to these customer locations and they're going to be providing the service that you have sold to that particular customer. And so when we start talking about technicians in the field, the key thing that we start talking about is mobility. How are we going to allow our technicians who are out in the field to interact with those work orders show us what's going on inside the, the, the scope of their particular schedule and be able to kind of define what's happening from within those individual situations. And that's where we're going to talk a little bit about the mobility app that's available as part of the field service solution. And so in this module we want to really look at you know why, why mobility is important and I think we've talked a little bit about that initially but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. We want to take in and show you the field service mobile application and show you how it's laid out and how it's different from the traditional mobile CRM uh, mobile application that you might be using on your phone or your tablet. And I think that's one of the critical pieces to remember is that it is a different application that is specifically targeted at field service functionality. And then we're going to show you just kind of a day in the life of a service technician and we're going to show you how to use that particular functionality to do things like go out on site, interact with the, the work order, capture signatures, take pictures, and do all the things that a technician would normally want to do during the life cycle of what they would be doing through that on-site visit. A couple other just final things to think about when you're talking about agreements. The first one we've talked about quite a bit, but I want to I want to bring it up again just because it is important. Remember that, you know, you don't have to have one singular schedule associated with an agreement. You can have multiple agreements. So in the situation we've talked about in the past, I could have one schedule set up for weekly options that are coming out there and one option set up for bi-monthly options. That's the whole point of agreements, is to make sure that you have enough flexibility within the context of that agreement to be able to schedule and, and create multiple work orders in multiple situations. Now the other thing to remember is that an agreement has a price list associated with it. That's price list is going to specify the price for every single product and service that is on that specific agreement. So make sure that when you're creating these agreements that any product and or service that will be used during that agreement is added to that agreement prices list. Um, usually when you think about it, an agreement usually has maybe a specified pricing arrangement that is set up for that particular customer and so you may be comping or giving them those products and or services at a highly discounted rate. And so because of that, each agreement may have their own specific price list that was created just for that particular agreement because you may have negotiated specific pricing principles for each one of those customers. So it's important to understand that any product and service that you're working with that's going to be associated with that agreement really should be added to that. And then the other thing to remember is even though the, the agreement itself is really the framework for generating the work orders, once the work order is created, all of that information is still editable at a work order level. So I might go in and I might add you know, multiple products and services to that situation, but I could go into each one of those individual options and modify the price list on the work order. I might be able to modify other additional information as long as the person that is going in and working through that has the appropriate permissions to do so. So remember that, again, it's it's really just a framework for generating the work order. Once the work order has been generated, people do have the capabilities to go in and modify that and work through those. So it does make the deployment options a little bit easier and more flexible, but you still have those capabilities to work through other options and, and customize them to, based on what you would need. When your technicians are out in the field, th their needs are different than a salesperson that's going through and, and trying to just kind of keep track of their day. You know, your, your salesperson or even your, your manager person is probably going to use the mobile application more from an informational standpoint. They're going to look at you know, their appointments that they have going on. They're going to look at their opportunities, their, their orders, the, the things that they are important to them. They're not, and they might be updating some of that information, but they're not necessarily doing the full-on interaction that, per se, a field service or 
or in the field technician would be doing. That in the field technician now needs to really have constant communication back with the dispatchers that let them understand what they're trying to accomplish in the grand scheme of uh, in scope of what they're doing. If they're currently in between visits, I need to be able to let the dispatcher and the other people within my organization know that I'm now traveling, which because of that, that brings in a whole different subset of needs that that field service technician needs from a mobile application. And so that's why the decision was made to introduce the field service mobile application. And so if any of you are familiar with kind of the history of the field service solution inside Dynamics 365, one of the things that you will understand is that it was always kind of uh, used the RESCO mobile platform for its solution. And they've taken some of that information and they've now used that as a foundation to build the Dynamics 365 mobile application application inside their field service implementation. And so this new field service specific mobile application is available for download from your appropriate store. Um, it does support Windows 10 devices, it supports iOS devices, and it also just uh, supports Android devices. So if you go out to your mobile application or you go out to your store for your mobile device, you will see the field service mobile application out there that you can download. And I would highly recommend utilizing that particular piece of functionality because that's going to give you everything that you would need from a mobility solution when you start talking about field service. Before I take you into the application and we actually utilize it a little bit, I want to talk just a little bit about you know initial setup and configuration and then just some things around use cases and how and, and what are options that are available to you. So first and foremost, once you download the application, there is an initial configuration that you have to do. So you do need to actually go into the, the field service mobile application and you need to connect it to your Dynamics 365 instance. Once you've connected it to your Dynamics 365 instance, you will actually do kind of an initial sync. And what that initial sync's gonna do is it's gonna go out into your organization based upon who you are, and it's gonna grab all of the field service related information, and it's gonna bring it down onto that mobile application. Now, you do have the capability at any point in time to change those connection uh, configuration options, but initially you will need to perform an initial sync. Now, when the app loads up, it'll look like it actually has stuff in there. It'll have a pre-populated, or it'll have information in there, but you still need to do that initial sync and that initial setup so it can connect to your specific Dynamics 365 organization and pull down the information that you're working with. Now the nice thing about the, the, the mobile application is the fact that it really does work kind of in two modes. So if you think about a technician who's out in the field, you know that technician may not always have internet connectivity, particularly when they're driving, depending upon you know what type of situations you might have equipped into the truck. Do the trucks have Wi-Fi? You know, what connectivity levels do you have? So because of that, the application does allow you to work in two modes. It allows you to work in an online mode and it allows you to work in an offline mode. Now the nice thing about the online mode is basically as you're going through and interacting with those items inside the application, it's going to be continuously syncing that information back and forth with the Dynamics 365 server. So there's really no need to go out and synch synchronize your device to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information as you're moving forward. Now the next time that you have when you're working offline, what ends up happening is all of that information is basically cached or downloaded down to your local device. And then the next time you go online, you do have to initiate a sync. And when you initiate a sync, then it's going to synchronize that information and those changes that you've made while you've been working offline back up into the initial app or back up into your Dynamics 365 deployment. So depending upon what the use case is or who the, you know, what your level of connectivity is, you do have the flexibility with this application to work both in an online and an offline mode. Once you get into the application, this is in essence what you're going to see. So you will now be able to go in and work through a lot of your key situations. And we'll talk about this as we get into the demonstration as well. But a couple key things to draw your attention to. The first thing that you'll see over here kind of on the slide is next to where it says field service. It's got kind of a little monitor with a, with a white screen filled in. That's basically signifying that this is in online mode. So I know that I have a direct connection to the Dynamics 365 server. The next option that you see here is my 
is my, my sync option. This is the button that I can use to synchronize the data back and forth. So depending upon if I was working online or offline, if I was in offline mode, that monitor would have more of an empty screen next to it and I wouldn't see that I was associated or, or attached to anything. Now there's a couple of things that you also need to remember when you're working through it. The other thing is you do have to have, if you remember back to when we initially talked about the field service setup, you do have to either have a field service admin, dispatcher, inventory purchase, or a resource role in order to be able to use the mobile application. So if you don't have one of those security roles or equivalent permissions associated with your account, you will not be able to use, excuse me, the field service mobile application. Now on top of that, it still honors CR or Dynamics 365 security. So in order to change some of the individual options that you want to work with, you may still have to have additional permissions inside your security role to be able to facilitate that. But you do at least need one of those four roles uh, in, inside the application or an equivalent to be able to facilitate and use it as you're working through it. So this is the mobile uh, field service mobile application. Now again, this is something that you would have to go out and initiate and download from your device store and then install it onto your application. Now we're actually using this on a Windows 10 machine so we can actually ex uh, make it bigger and, and fill up the entire screen. But obviously depending upon the form factor that you're accessing it and working with the mobile application on, it's going to be condensed and, and adjusted accordingly to the form factor that you're working through. So the first thing that you're going to see when you kind of come in down here is you're going to see this setup option. And so this setup option is where you have to connect this to your specific instance. So I can see in here that I have my account information for my Dynamics 365 account. This is where I would basically go in, supply my connection information. I would distinguish what specific URL I want to use for my CRM or for my Dynamics uh, 365 implementation. I would specify the username and password. And then I would also specify whether or not I want to save the password credentials so it's using that information as I'm moving forward. Forward. Now, in addition to that, I also have the capability inside my setup to actually go in and then define some of my other options. So I also have the capabilities to really define you know, some additional settings around this as far as how the auto-syncing situation is taking place, um, when's it syncing the information, it's syncing the information upon application startup and change, um, how is it syncing login information, is it saving password. These are just kind of generalized setup information that I can utilize inside the application. Now, I can see here that I'm working in an offline mode, so if I connect to it, now it's going to switch me to my online mode, so I have a direct connection, um, and it will constantly be refreshing and syncing. If I ever need to manually synchronize my information, I can hit my sync option, it'll look at my information credentials, it'll then go out and resync the information from there so I can work with it from there. Now, there are options inside the setup as well where you can kind of delete the cached information, so if for some reason you're working through and something gets kind of brought up and it doesn't work in the way that you intended, you could always delete the initial information and then resynchronize and it would basically redrop everything back into the application so you could work with it from there. So what I can see here is kind of the overall generalized information that I would want to work with inside the application. So I have kind of my dashboard view that provides kind of a quick dashboard overview of some of the key items that I might want to work with. I can click on accounts and it will now show me my individualized accounts that I have that are basically my service accounts. So these would be the accounts that are set up as accounts inside my implementation that I can attach to work orders and items that I'm working through. Now one of the things that you'll see within here is I have the ability to filter, search, and organize this information. So if I want to look for a specific account inside here, I could do a search inside this item. As I'm typing, it'll go out and search for that individual information, and now I could select that specific account, and it will slide over and open up that information inside here, so I can now navigate and look at that individualized information. Now, one of the things that you'll see down towards the bottom is my related information. So all your related entities that are attached to this particular item will appear down here. So if I wanted to look at a map of this location, I can click on the map view. It's going to go out and pull out my mapping agent and it will show me a kind of a mapped location to where this particular item is. If I wanted to, I could go up onto the map option from here and then I actually have the option to open up maps or whatever supported option that I'm using for the device that I'm on and I can actually get driving directions to the specific item that I want to work through. So this gives me some particular options around interacting with those individual options. 
I also could go in and I could look at all the related items associated with this. So if I had contacts associated with that account, if I had quotes, orders, invoices, activities, any of those individualized options, I would now be able to select on each one of those uh, categories and it would then display that information for that record inside this particular item. I'm going to switch back to my list of accounts again. So I'm going to remove this option from my list of accounts. Now I could filter. And when I filter this information, I have basically column sets and fields inside the application that I can use to filter based upon those options. So this is where I could now go in and if I wanted to filter all information based upon like the, uh, a specific city, this is where, or state, this is where I could find the field that I want to filter it on. I build my filter criteria so I could say if the state equals a specific option. So now I'm going to come in here and say if the state equals Washington. Now I hit save on my filtering criteria and it's going to go out and it's going to filter all of these account set information based upon that option. So I have the capabilities to filter all of these individualized records. If I want to clear the filter, I can click on clear filter. It'll clear my filter back out and then I'll be back into my initial uh, items that I'm working with. When I go into uh, bookings, this will show me all of the uh, individualized bookings that have been set up for that particular day for all the different resources that I might be working with. Again, based upon what specific scenario I want to work with, if I wanted to filter this down and look at the individualized booking statuses for me specifically, I could filter my resource information to filter it based upon who I am. And now it's going to show me all of my individualized bookings for me as a whole. And now I could go into each one of these bookings, open it up, and now start working with the the, the subsequent work order that would be associated with that inside the application. Now we're going to do more with that here in just a couple of minutes, so I'm going to come back to the booking option. But in addition, you can obviously see things like your customer assets. So if you have any assets that are associated with specific customers that you're using, you can see all of those individualized assets listed into here. And again, just like any other option that you can work with, you can click on that particular scenario. It'll bring you into the information, show you the accounts and items that it's associated with, and then you would have the capabilities to drive into those individual items with a little bit more detail. You also would have the capabilities to look at time off requests. So if there's any options here for time off uh, scenarios, if you wanted to submit a time off request, you could also look at those, but you could also submit that time off request directly from within this situation. So in here, I can click on new. It opens up my time off request. I would specify what date I want to take basically off on that scenario. So I want to say that I am going to take Monday off. Starting at 8 a.m. And I'm going to be gone basically all day on Monday. And let's just say to 5 p.m. And the resource that's going to be gone is Derek. And then I could save this and this would now submit my time off request. Now the dispatcher could open that up inside the schedule board and then they would be able to approve or deny my time off request based upon that situation. In addition to this, I would also be able to see things like my entities on a map. I would also be able to work with activity. So these are the kind of core critical aspects that you would normally want to see inside of the application as you're going through. So now that we've talked a little bit about, okay, here's how you navigate through it, let's talk a lot about you know, why you're specifically going to use the field service mobile application. And that's because you're a field, a field agent who's out, on, out in the field and you need to work with and interact with your work orders and you need to be able to do anything that you need to do to complete the job appropriately. And so from within the mobile application, you now have the capabilities to do many different situations. And this is just kind of a highlight of some of the key topics that we'll talk about here over the course of the next few minutes. Obviously, we saw when we were doing the demo that 
that you can look at and review all of your work order bookings. So you can see all the specific bookings that you have for, for your work orders and, and during the course of your day. You also have the capabilities to, once you're in that particular item, you can navigate to and open up the work order that's specifically associated with that. So I can now see the details of that work order. And that's kind of what you're seeing on this particular screen. I can see the account that it's associated with. I can see the status that's associated with this item. I can see priorities, anything that might be important to me as I'm working with it. If I'm out in the field and I need to see specifically how to get to that particular work order, I would have the capability, much like you saw on the account option, to click on the map icon. It's going to look at the service location for or the, the service account that's associated with that work order. It's going to display that on the map. And then by clicking on that map option, I would now be able to go ahead and initiate driving directions on how to get to that particular location as I'm working through it. Now again, as I'm going through the work order, I'm going to be doing things like, you know, updating my travel time. I'm letting people know that I'm in route to those individual situations. So I can now go in and I can update those individual items as part of the work order status. I also can look at all the items associated with that. So if there's any incidents associated with that, or if there's any service tasks associated with that, I can look at the tasks and the products and the services, and I can navigate to each one of those individual items, and I can open those up inside the application so I can work with them. And then also as you're going through this, obviously you're going to at some point in time maybe want to capture a customer signature and have that utilized for the record you would be able to go ahead and use the signature piece to go ahead and capture things like notes and pictures and, and items that would be beneficial to you so now what I want to do is I want to take you into the application and I want to look at it from a field service technician perspective and how they're going to interact with this individualized information So I'm back in the mobile application, and now I'm looking at my bookings. So again, I'm looking at the bookings for, for my particular situation, so I can see that I have a work order scheduled for today at 3 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to open up the booking. So inside the booking, I can see the work order that is associated with this. I can see the status of this individualized booking that I'm currently scheduled to be working on this option as I'm going through. I can see the start time that it's scheduled to work at. I can also see that you know actual arrival times and options. So as I'm in route or as I'm getting to the customer location, this is where I would have the capabilities to click into here and then adjust and say when I actually arrived and as I was working through it. So as I'm setting up the actual arrivals and the actual information, now I'm going to start to get information where it's going to see based upon individual item what I did from those particular situations. I can also see travel durations and items that I would be working with from there. Now as I'm going through this, now I can go into these individualized options and I can click on like the information button. And this is going to open up more specific information about this work order. This is going to show me the, the, the sub statuses, the priorities, this is going to show me the primary incident type that's associated with it. This is going to show me the customer assets that are associated with it, the work order type, address information, whether or not it's taxable, uh, where it came from. So basically anything that you would want to see from a work order perspective, I now have the capabilities to interact with as part of this particular option. If I wanted to, I can also go into other, and this is also going to show me individualized information, maybe the, when it was promised, maybe this might be information coming in from the agreement itself. I could also look at some of the different incidents that would be associated with this. So this is the incident type that's associated with it. If I had multiple incidents, I could see the individualized incidents. I could see each task that I need to work with from a durational perspective. So I can see the measure energy uh, efficiency information. I can see that the item was in here. If I'm going to work through the percentage complete on this option, I could enter that I have completed a certain percentage of this option. It's then going to go ahead and update that information inside the application. And because that has been accomplished, it's now going to roll that information up as part of the actual duration that I'm going through. So this is that checklist functionality that as a service technician is important to me because I can now roll that information up as I'm going through it. Now, in addition to that, if I look at some of my individualized, if I go back to the booking, this is where I could now go in and I could look at some of those individual situations as far as the booking. So if I want to say that I'm now traveling as part of this, I could go into the work order, look at my booking status, update my status to that I'm traveling. Now if the dispatcher were to look at this after it's been refreshed within the system, it would then go out and see that I was actually um, traveling within that particular item. So I could see and have that reflected on the schedule board automatically. Now, if I go back into this work order and I open it up, the other thing that you have is under your more options. 
Oftentimes you're going to run into situations where not everything is going to be able to be, you know, seen based upon what it, what you have displayed within the application itself. So one of the options here is if I'm on site with this, I could now go ahead and hit signature and this is where I could capture a signature of this particular customer. So I could come into here, I could have the customer sign based upon that option if I'm using a touch screen, I could then hit save. It would then save that signature so I would have that information available and I would know that that's an item that we've used within that particular situation when I'm going through. So now this is where as I'm interacting with this, I, you can start to see that I can check things off from a task perspective. I can update my individual durations from the items that I'm working with on the actual work order itself. And then as I'm going through, I also can flag information for how I want to work through it. So I can capture payment information if I need to. I could also create a follow-up task. So if there's something else that needs to be done based upon the fact that I was unable to complete a particular situation, situation, I could now go ahead and create a follow-up record on that situation and then if I wanted to I could create a new work order based upon that option and now have a new work order get generated in the system based upon the fact that I needed to create that item. So this is what gives me a lot of different options from a field technician to be able to go in and interact with these individual items and that's what makes the mobile solution from the field app just a wonderful option because it just it does give you a lot of extra flexibility when you start working through these. Once, you're, once you have your work order scheduled, obviously you're ready to send them out. This is where the mobility app comes into play. And as you can see in this module, it has a lot of flexibility and a lot of options available to you. The key thing to remember is to look at what specific operating system that you're using for the mobile device that you're working with, and then download and install the mobile app onto your application. And so in this module, we talked a lot about what the functionality is. And the key things to remember is the mobile app as a whole does support both online and offline capabilities. Remember that if you're doing offline capabilities, once you're offline, you will have to go back on and synchronize that information. And once you synchronize that information, it'll then push and update all of the changes based upon those items. Now, once you're in the mobile application, as a technician, you will be able to go in and look at all the individualized bookings that are out there that you need to work on from that particular situation. Technicians have the ability to select the booking. From that booking, they can go in and they can work specifically on the work order that's associated with it. We can do things like update the status of that information. I can go into the individualized tasks that we're working through as part of that option, and I can update the individual tasks, and I can do all of that information directly from within the mobile application so I can service and maintain that work order. Once it's done, I can mark that information from a status perspective as completed. That'll reflect back onto the schedule board so the dispatcher can see exactly what's happening within those items. If I need to, as I'm traveling from one item to another, inside the mobile application there is a mapping functionality that I can click on. That'll open up specific maps that I can use to navigate from one area to another, and I can print out driving directions to locate how to get to that customer location based upon where I am at that point. And every single item that's in the mobile application application does give us the capabilities to filter that information down to make it much, much easier for me to find and, and work with the information that is specific to what I need to accomplish in order to do my job. So the mobile app is just a wonderful option. I would highly recommend, like I said, bringing it into your implementation downloading it, installing it, making sure that your users have the appropriate security roles, and then letting them go out and having your technicians experience it.